like I, I I thought it was a joke or something and this is the worst immigration and the longest process I have ever experienced even when I went to Iraq it was not like this what is going on like I was just I was so tired and so cranky I've never seen so many people get rejected to enter a country like oh my god I'm dying I'm Katya and I work multiple professions while traveling the globe in the last three years I had my office set in Southeast Asia Turkey Iraq and most of Europe I lived in Paris London and Tenerife and currently I'm traveling the beautiful Colombia I'm always in search of a great time, all while battling with anxiety and depression. I mostly travel solo and spontaneously, so these videos are not in any way scripted or planned. It's just my honest impressions and my stories. I hope you enjoy. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Cancun, Mexico, or at least my very fancy, very expensive, well, not so fancy, just expensive room in Cancun, Mexico. Um, I would like to show you my gorgeous view, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything because it's so wide outside. Yes, Mexico City! Gorgeous. Like most resort towns, everything is under construction. Okay. How we got here <laughs> if you haven't um, watched my previous video where I explain everything about how my phone got lost slash stolen and how I decided to cut my trip short and go back to my home country but <laughs> my flight itinerary is a little bit crazy uh, I'm literally gonna be traveling for two days and first of my three flights is checked. So I'm doing all this without a phone. Um, so <laughs> my itinerary is as follows. I left the hostel in Chapinero in Bogota last night with a taxi at about 10 p.m. Uh, arrived at the airport in like 20 minutes because there was no traffic. Um, it's um, holidays, it's Easter holidays in Colombia, so everything was pretty much closed. There was like, the whole city felt like it was a ghost town. My flight, um, okay, first, yeah, okay, taxi, amazing, um, 30,000 pesos, um, really friendly guy, good experience. I arrived to the airport, I, uh, do the check-in because I didn't have my phone so you know boarding with a boarding pass on your laptop I think would be a little bit weird and probably very difficult so I had to go into the check-in um, even though I didn't have any checked-in luggage um, the most tranquilo security I have ever experienced you'd think going out of Colombia they're gonna be like you know, dogs sniffing and stuff. Nope, nada. At the end, I had 70,000 pesos to spend, so I bought some souvenirs. Again, everyone was super nice. Like, Colombians are just, like, really nice and super warm and friendly people. They will always, like, help you. Then, <laughs> oh, I also bought my last Club Colombia cerveza and enjoyed. I went to the gate and sit down and enjoy my beer and then what happened was they started calling some names on the PA and um, basically the thing is like no Latin person ever will be able to pronounce my name correctly because it's spelled in a way that they just pronounce it differently like it has a J <laughs> so it, for them it's H so for all the people who are commenting on my video from Medellin um, that I'm not pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> you're, you would not be able to pronounce any of the names of towns or personal names in Slovenia or probably any Slavic country. So please spare me a little bit. Yeah, so I'm there enjoying my beer and then the PA starts calling the names and I'm like, okay, I don't even know if they called my name and what, what is this all about? Um, so I see a person who doesn't look Latin, I don't know, racial profiling in the queue. So I just stand up and go there and ask him like if 
what is the queue about? And he said, well, basically, I don't know, because they just called some names and I heard mine. So I'm queuing. I was like, hmm, interesting. Um, anyway, he does his thing at the gate and I asked him, okay, so what happened? And he was like, well, um, basically, I had to pay extra because Mexico has now enforce some new tax law and I bought my ticket a month ago so I have to pay it and I was like mm, okay I thought that I paid this tax when I was booking my ticket so I don't think they call my name anyway I was like whatever happens happens and so I start chatting to this guy and you know just like normal stuff where you're from where you're going so two minutes in the conversation and this is like I, I thought it was a joke or something I didn't think it was even possible my itinerary is super 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 crazy I'm literally going through five different airports taking some really random flights to Zagreb and this guy is Greek and we figure out we have literally the same itinerary we're taking all the same flights like even in Brussels we changed the airport from Brussels International to Brussels Charleroi so I was like, how can you have the same itinerary? I'm flying Bogota, Cancun, 12 hour layover, Cancun, Brussels, about seven hour layover, change of airport, and then Charleroi to Zagreb. It's so random. Like, I was like, there's no way there can be another person doing this same thing at the same time. There is. <laughs> so now it makes me feel a little bit less anxious that I have someone who has a phone so if I need something I can um, kind of like rely a little bit on him well I have no idea where he is now so I can't really <laughs> do this right now um, but let's say when we are changing airports tomorrow in Brussels I think um, I'm, we're gonna probably stick together and because he doesn't really know what he needs to do and I checked everything I planned everything Anyway, so that was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Um, yeah, so then we boarded the flight, we took on on time. I couldn't sleep for the entire duration, three hours and a half of the flight. Um, I don't know what's happening, but for the last three days, I don't know if it's the full moon or what, but I'm so tired because I, I cannot sleep. My mind just keeps fucking working and it just... I feel like it's this hamster in a wheel because it's like literally repeating. I'm, I'm writing articles and Instagram posts and even like um, what I'm going to say in YouTube videos in my head. Like, all the, it's like a, I'm hearing this narrator in my head all the time. And I'm like, no, you don't have to do this right now. You need to sleep right now. You need to rest. So I didn't sleep on the flight. Um, we arrived at 5 a.m. and yeah, I mean, I was cranky. <laughs> so we go and do the immigration and oh my Lord, this is the worst immigration and the longest process I have ever experienced. I, I, I don't know, like even, even when I went to Iraq, it was not like this, even like Asia, um, US, well, US, they were questioning me, I think, for 20 minutes, but I think I still, like, it was one hour and a half. The queue systems here in Mexico, forget about it. Like, people were just, like, going from one queue, forming a next one when uh, some officer's boots opened somewhere. I'm like, no, this is not how you do it. You were at the back of the line. Like, people at the front of the line go there like ah uh, it's just like you know this is one one thing that i love about the english like they know how to queue and most europeans like they would not do this but no they don't care and to be honest like most of these people were colombians because mexicanos had their own line and they were like processed first and then everyone else had to wait and you know what the problem is okay there's two issues with this emigration i mean i wouldn't say issues but why it took forever is that first of all there was, um, I think, four immigration officers for the entire plane, which I don't know how many people is on the plane, like 300? Ah, uh, no, less. So 32 rows uh, and six seats in each row. How much is that? 
mm, like less than 180. Okay, that's not that many people then. There was a lot of people, there was four boots open. Mm, Mexicanos got first, everyone else was left behind, <laughs> fend for themselves. And every Colombian person, like, they were just checking everything so thoroughly. Like, they had to show so many papers and they were giving them phones with, I don't know, I didn't hear, I think it was like reservations for this and that, and I don't know, onward flights, and I don't know, like, they were, and they kept, like, going outside of the booth to the immigration office, and this is the second problem, they were working so slowly and walking so slowly, and just everything, like, like slots, like, I've never seen someone work so slowly in my entire life before, like, if you, if you were doing nothing, you would probably be doing it at probably like the same speed I was like what is going on like I was just I was so tired and so cranky and I kept like <laughs> commenting in English which I think only the guy that was standing behind me like it was this very nicely groomed gentleman he understood a little bit English and he was like laughing at me because I was just like oh my god I'm dying you know I was like I, I wanted to be processed like as soon as possible because I had reserved a shuttle and I had a reserved room in this super expensive hotel close to the airport, well, 10 kilometers away from the airport. And I had no, no way to contact them that's where I am. So I was getting anxious. And also like the room was booked until, you know, the check out is like 1 p.m. And it was like, already 6 a.m. and I'm like this is this is still going on so I was literally at the back of the queue even though I was in the middle of the queue when we got there I ended up at the back because people just started like forming other queues and like going from one queue to the other and like and you know I'm a decent human being I'm not gonna do that I'm like I'm in a queue I'm gonna wait here Ugh, yeah it was really annoying anyway so like all these Colombian people, I've never seen so many people get rejected to enter a country than here. And, you know, I'm in Schengen, uh, I come from Schengen and I've been flying to UK in the last, you know, two years, like really, really often. And even there with Brexit, like the processes are like so much faster, like, and, and I, I don't know what it is. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it was only with the Colombians, everyone else. Um, got like super fast I literally got processed in like 20 seconds she asked me um, <clears throat> she asked me um, how long I'm staying like what's the purpose of my stay how long I'm staying and I just said well I have a flight today I'm just here for a layover she was like can I see your ticket I was like well I don't have a phone I can show you on my laptop and she was just like stab <laughs> go I was like okay but yeah, also like everyone working there seemed so miserable. I don't know, like it was just really not a nice welcome. Like, I don't know, in Colombia, when I went through immigration, like people, the, the immigration officers seemed like really friendly and warm and like welcoming here. They looked like, you know, go away. Like, I don't want to do this. This is the worst day of my life. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> anyway so the airport is literally empty this was the only plane landing 5 a.m in the morning until i got processed it was 6 30 i go out oh also they stopped me at customs you had to fill this custom form which is only in spanish so i had i'm, I'm not signing anything because i have no idea what i'm signing here i don't know what it is so i'm like going from the immigration officers a few meters and I get stopped by customs and he's like paper <laughs> and I'm like um no comprendo and then he shows me like the uh, English version mm, uh, like English translation so another minute to fill out the form that I don't have any weapons and stuff only food and then I was free to go and then I walked outside of the airport, yeah, completely empty, empty. only this guy who was behind me, <laughs> this guy who was behind me in the queue, I was like walking next to me, and then I come out, and I'm like, there was supposed to be a shuttle bus uh, waiting for me to go to the hotel, 
there's no one there. Well, there's two other um, vans that belong to some other resort. And I was like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do now? Like, I, I don't have a phone. How do I contact these people? You need to contact them via WhatsApp, not email, not any other thing. And I see the guy. I see the guy who was behind me in the queue. And I'm like, hola. <laughs> Sorry, can I use your phone? So... <clears throat> I called, <laughs> I called the hotel, they didn't answer, so I sent them the message, I was like, and the guy was like, I need to go to the bus, and I'm like, oh my god, so sorry, bye, yeah, it was really nice, um, and <laughs> he was Colombian, <laughs> so yeah, I sent them the message, and then I'm like, pray, and it's like, already like, the sun is coming up, and I'm like, I'm so tired, and then, of course, there's these tax drivers outside waiting, trying to hustle you and send you, sell you the, the ride. One of them approaches me and he was actually really, really nice. And I told him my experience with immigration. He was like, oh, yeah, they're probably working like 10 hour shifts and who knows, like really bad conditions. And I was like, oh, yeah, OK, I mean, I get it. But yeah, it's just not not a nice welcome. Um, but yeah, he was very pleasant and <laughs> he tried to sell me a ride for literally less than 10 minutes less than 10 kilometers for 35 us dollars and i was like <laughs> excuse me 35 dollars like even in london one of the most expensive cities in the entire planet like 35 dollar ride you know that's expensive that's not a 10 minute ride like no and he was like well you know we have to hustle and blah 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 and i'm like i'm just gonna wait for my shuttle thanks but yeah we were chatting a little bit and uh, he lowered the price to 30 and i was just like oh, please let this shuttle show up and he did in like 10 minutes and i was like oh my god because the reviews of the hotel online were like mm, yeah shuttle coming not coming like a lot of people were not satisfied with the shuttle service or like with the hotel itself but there was not much available and um, close to the airport, free shuttle bus, free breakfast, which I already had. Um, I mean, it was very, very limited, but they had fruit, so I had a ton of fruit. Um, 1 p.m. checkout, which I got extended until 3 p.m. I mean, they're really nice here at the hotel. Like, I arrived at 7 and, yeah, they, they said that they can... Um, extend my stay for free until 3 p.m so i was like oh yes amazing thank you um but yeah uh quarter past three i have a shuttle back to the airport my flight is only at 7 p.m but i had a three hours sleep i feel like i didn't sleep at all my mind again just didn't stop working um i already took a really nice shower with mm, warm water not hot like you know after a flight you really want a hot shower so did i mention i paid like 110 um, euros for a night stay that's i think it's literally the most expensive thing on this trip um besides the some of the flights I don't think I paid a hundred and something for, for anything. I'm going to try to relax a little bit. Um, I just checked into my flight tomorrow from Brussels to Zagreb. I already sent my regards to everyone back at home that I've done um, like one third of the trip. Um, what else? Mm, nothing. I'm, I think I'm going to grab food at the airport. I have some snacks. Should I go down to the pool? <laughs> oh yeah, the best thing about, uh, the best moment, let's say, about this trip was um, just as I, I left the airport in the shuttle, going towards, driving towards the, the hotel, the sun started rising, so I saw like a really, really, really beautiful sunrise, like, you know, I don't see many sunrises because I just don't like being up early. I'm not a morning person. But, you know, like I saw the whole 
thing glowing there on the horizon over shopping malls and construction sites and gas stations <laughs> yeah i mean to be honest cancun in the in the few minutes of drive that i've seen a, a tiny part of it uh looks a lot like you uh, like us um but yeah the the old town is far away i don't really have time to do that um just want to relax and get to my next flight in about six hours anyway so this whole video is just about my first leg of the whole trilogy of me going home i don't know why it's always like it's not always but when i was um ending my southeast asia trip um three years ago it was because of the pandemic uh, when the pandemic started i was well i was all around the place but when it really started going towards lockdown um i was in bangkok um i was supposed to fly to tokyo meet my younger brother there and have a almost like a three-week trip with him there and um, yeah, everything started getting canceling. We know what happened. Everyone started uh, buying tickets home. So I was like, okay, I think I should do it as well. So I bought a ticket. Um, I was quite lucky because at that time, I know a lot of people um, didn't have the opportunity to book any like affordable flights. Like the flights got like super, super expensive to fly from Asia back to Europe. Um, my flight, I think was only like, um something like 400 euros maybe even less from bangkok i was flying to singapore i know in singapore i had a long layover maybe like six seven hours but singapore airport is huge like <laughs> literally they have a cinema and everything so i was just kind of like wandering around and like yeah was was nice but very nerve-wracking because you just kept looking at the board if anything's gonna get cancelled because so many flights were getting cancelled um, at that time because the airports just started like closing so from singapore i was flying to helsinki and from helsinki to vienna and then from vienna um like to the slovenian border is about two three hours driving but the border was no, no, it wasn't that the border was closed. There was no like public transport, no trains, no shuttle buses, no normal buses, sorry. No, nothing. So I was like, fuck, how do I get, how do I get from Vienna? And, and I think at that point, did Ljubljana airport already close? I think so. Uh, and I don't remember what happened to Zagreb, which are, those are the two main airports close to in Slovenia and close to Slovenia. Mm. So I, my friend uh, who lives in Austria, who lives in Klagenfurt, she was actually really kind to say, look, just take, um, take a domestic train from Vienna to um, Klagenfurt and we will pick you there and take you to the border. And I asked my father to come. He also like had to drive for two hours to come pick me up at the border. We did this like crazy exchange all with masks. I couldn't even like hug my father after not seeing him for, I don't know, three months. And yeah, it was really crazy. So this kind of reminds me of that. It's like so many flights, two days traveling, like so many crazy things happening. Anyway, let me know in the comments, like what was your weirdest like um itinerary like travel itinerary like going back home or just like flying somewhere having like connection flights layovers and all that and like how do you handle like the stress or if anyone has ever traveled without an, uh, a phone like in now in these modern times where you know all the tickets all the accounts everything is on your phone um let me know i would really like to hear like how is your experience or if this is just me being dramatic and super anxious or if like other people are also, um, how to say, like, you know, a bit worried about these kind of things and like how everything's going to turn out because you do have to rely on other people um, quite a bit 
um, like just the kindness of people like when you need to contact someone you need to you know ask for a phone like I did today um, so yeah uh, for everyone so far who has been really nice on this trip I'm sending good vibes and to you as well and thank you so much for watching and I guess I will see you next time bye adios